Hello, this is Padma from PadmaAli.com and today we're going to be talking about some practical tips to overcome imposter syndrome and how that can actually enhance your leadership potential. So first of all, let's talk about what is imposter syndrome. When has there ever been a time where you've done something and it has been super successful and there's evidence to show that maybe it was a presentation, maybe it was um, something for your board members and it was received really well. However, you left the meeting thinking, oh goodness, I bombed it. They're going to find out what a fraud I am. I am not walking my talk all kinds of negative thoughts about that presentation or whatever you have just finished. That is imposter syndrome. Or you get very anxious wanting to prove that you are really good at what you do. Or you work really, really hard because you think that you're not doing a good enough job. All those are signs that you may you may you may you may feel like you are an imposter in what you do and it is not unusual for highly successful people to feel like they're imposters if you want to know more about that please listen to my latest podcast episode on how to work with imposter syndrome so let's talk about some practical tips and in that episode, I'm going into details on how, on why we have imposter, if you have imposter syndrome, why you might have developed imposter syndrome and also what, how to work with that. But today I'm going to be giving you some uh, three very practical tips on dealing with imposter syndrome. Number one, be a hawk when it comes to your thoughts. Imposter syndrome is nothing but thoughts in your head that are saying that you are not good enough, you do not, you, you are not providing value, you are any of those negative thoughts. It's just a thought. So be a hawk when it comes to your thoughts. You can, you, you have to be a gatekeeper for those thoughts because the more those thoughts come, the more they are going to interfere in how you feel about yourself. So ask questions like, how do I know this to be true? And make sure you don't fall into the trap of looking for evidence of how this thought is actually true of, of you being an imposter. So be a hawk when it comes to your thoughts. Replace those negative thoughts with positive thoughts about yourself. And as we go through the next couple of tips, it'll become clear on how to select thoughts that are going to support your growth and evolution rather than bring you down. The second piece, the second tip on how to overcome uh, imposter syndrome is to, are you ready for this? <laughs> A lot of people have trouble doing this, but I'm really going to invite you to, to work with this. It is to celebrate you. What does that even mean? Think about a time where you had an amazing win, whatever that was. Maybe it was you mastering something or maybe it was you doing really well at a meeting. Maybe it was you working out and being and lifting this and, and mastering lifting some heavy weights. Who knows? Whatever it is. Think about that. Did you celebrate you right after? Probably not. Most people don't. And this is why it becomes really important because what happens with imposter syndrome is that you really put yourself down. There's no room to celebrate you. And with this, the more you celebrate you, the more you do it from a place of like, oh, wow, I did this. And that is going to help you create more wins. Why is that? Let's look at that a little bit closely. I'm gonna give you an analogy and this will make sense of why we need to celebrate our wins to overcome imposter syndrome. First one, has the, let, let me give you this analogy, it'll make more sense. Think about the car you drive. Think about the first time you got that car. Now, the moment you got that car, the moment you pulled it out of the parking lot, 
did you start to notice more of that same model or brand of car? It's because the brain, it's called the reticular activating system. The reticular activating system is a function of the brain where it's going to notice patterns. It's going to notice similarities. So it's going to pick up on the same model or brand of car that you're driving because it's now going to pay attention to that. So the more wins you have, the more, you're, the more you celebrate your wins, the more your brain is now going to start looking for those specific wins. And when you celebrate your wins, then there's no room for the negative thoughts that come up with imposter syndrome. One of my coaches from a long time ago, his name is Jason Parker. He's an Olympian. He won the Olympic medal. Um, and he talks a lot about something called RAC, RAC, RAC it up, which is recognize, acknowledge, and celebrate you. The more you do that, the more you will find, if you want to listen to a, a podcast episode on my interview with him, please go ahead and listen to it in my podcast, Create Your Vibrant Life podcast, where I've interviewed him and he talks about this. So recognize, acknowledge, and celebrate you. The more you do that, the less there is room for these imposter syndrome thoughts or internal dialogues around that, okay? So the third one of how to overcome um, imposter syndrome. Identify what part of you feels like you're not good enough. Identify what part of you feels like you are an imposter, you're a fraud. What does that even mean? So if you think about it, there are many different parts of you operating at the same time. You know, has there been a time where you're like, I want to eat vanilla ice cream and I want to also eat chocolate ice cream. I want to go for a walk, but I also want to take a nap. What it is, is there's a part of you that wants to go for a walk. There's a part of you that wants to take a nap. There's a part of you that wants to eat vanilla ice cream. There's a part of you that wants to eat chocolate ice cream. It's just a part of you. It is not all of you. But what happens with negative thoughts is that it takes over and then it starts to feel like everything is negative, meaning all aspects are like, I am not good enough. No, there's just a part of you that thinks that you're not good enough. There's a part of you that thinks that you're a fraud. There's a part of you that probably thinks you did an amazing job at the presentation. There's a part of you that probably thinks that you did, you did amazing preparation for this. There's a part of you that will celebrate your wins. There's a part of you that is going to be like, it's, it's all, it's just a part of you. When you can identify that part of you and what that part of you is saying, if you form a relationship with that part of you, it will give you more information about how it even came to be. What does that even mean? It means that sometime in the past, in your life, you have had experiences where you have put yourself down or whether or, or someone has said something to you, uh, uh, someone you trusted, someone you, a caregiver or something when you were very young, didn't believe in you or something happened, okay? That is how these parts of us come to be and their job is to keep you safe. Maybe it wasn't safe being seen. Maybe it wasn't safe being um, that, uh, that public about something. So this part of this job is to keep you safe. So it shows up as an imposter, like you're a fraud, you, you, you're not good enough. And so it tries to put you down so that if someone else puts you down, it doesn't hurt. Its only job is to protect you. So when you can identify what is that part of you that makes you feel the way you do, it is going to be easy to work with that, okay? So identify that, recognize where it's coming from and work on letting it go. You know, with my clients, what I do is we do, we clear it from an energetic imprint level so that you can, you can be free of that from your system. It, it never comes back again. Otherwise, what will happen is it keeps coming back in some form or the other. It's, it's like um, the whack-a-mole, right? Like my kids used to have the whack-a-mole when they were little, like you would just hit on one thing and then they, uh, it, it would hit the head, it'll go down and then it'll come back up from another place. That's exactly what happens when you don't clear energetic imprints on a um, deeper level, okay? So my invitation to you is to, let's recap. First one is be a hawk with your thoughts. 
Okay, very important. Be very, very, very diligent about what thoughts you're letting into your brain and what you're not. The second one is to celebrate you. The third one is to identify what part of you feels that way, understand where it's coming from and letting it go. Okay, so these practical tips, apply them, share this video with other people in your life um, and comment below if you have questions or if you have comments about how you worked with imposter syndrome, please share below, share this, subscribe to this channel so that you can get more notified when I release more videos and also listen to the episode number 92 of the Create Your Vibrant Life podcast on imposter syndrome. All right. Thank you so much for watching and take care.